Always wanted this kind of outro. Wishing I could go back and tell everything I now know to a younger me. Looking up at 23, filled up with anxiety to overcome what's underneath and let him know he onto something, but he got some problems coming. You'll feel like you need a lot, but you'll act like you're wanting nothing. It's like you're paralyzed, can't move because you're terrified. Mind inside a paradigm where you don't even dare to try. So you just lay at night, wide awake with grandeurs of a way of life where everything is perfect till you open those ungrateful eyes. It's kind of like your place to hide. So instead, you'll do everything they say to do. You'll get a corporate job and make 100K out of school. The music still be working at it with your far from perfect habits. I wish that I could tell you that everything will be fine. But I'm not really sure I'm qualified to because I thought I'd know what to say by now. And honestly, I thought I'd be in LA by now. Instead, I'm wasting all my time like I've got nothing to prove. Sit alone and ruin my day just for something to do. And it's been the same for years without an evolution. Claim to be the next to do it without ever executing. I got a mixture of excuses and a list of resolutions and feel guilty doing anything unless I've been productive. But time doesn't wait, so I'm just missing moments. I'm getting older without getting any closer. Every week I board another flight that takes me farther from my goals and leaves me at a destination that is hardly like a home. So now I'm out of sorts and feeling out of pocket. I'm drifting out of port. I'm set on autopilot and just to pay the price so I can pay the rent and either pay attention or feel this pain again. And honestly, I'm terrified that I'ma die and be forgotten quickly. If I go out, I don't know if there's a lot who'd miss me. Hopefully I really have a soulmate so at least I'll have a body beside mine to be rotten with me. My mind has been making all these obstacles Some days I wake up and I feel like I'm unstoppable And then the next day it feel like it's all impossible The world is at my fingers but there's nowhere else I wanna go And last night I finally hit my limit Liquor in my system but never had clearer vision Punching walls and throwing keys, glass shards and broken screens I couldn't keep blaming life for problems Cause I know it's me, the root of all these issues is the lack of all my actions Tired of feeling like I'm not committed to my passions And as the tears flow, I had a moment of clarity Feeling like I'm finally hearing all the things I would say to me Like, I'm begging you to cut the axe then the annex It isn't any kind of magic, ain't no rabbit and hat trick It's just maximum actions at bats with natural talent And it's gonna actually happen once you can axe the distractions But right now nobody's nearing ya And doing nothing is your mode and your median You wanna flounder, you should go to aquariums The block is mine like I'm owning Ethereum I know you can hear me, but it's slow and I'm fearing You gon' end up like another fucking old bitch bit of sneering man just walk around with absolutely no need for air and lungs an old testament back to times when no one would pair him up so please just for a minute put a hold on the snare and drums give me a moment to share the love and if you're over it fair enough just let me know now do you really want the gold or are you here for fun because if it's the latter i'll happily end the banter you can get on that plane and live happily ever after but i saw the way you got up this morning you haven't smiled since you stopped your recording and I won't raise my voice now because I'm tired of yelling. Nobody's buying your charade, so why you trying to sell it? Said it's affecting those who love you and believe in you. The ones who want to see you do the shit that you've been meaning to. So treat this like you want it or get treated for this problem. You can't go through life halfing with these clouds around your conscience. You know you need to live each day deliberate because red is unforgiving. You got choices. Now show me which one is it. And I'm not worried about the numbers or the press of the streams. Just prove to me that you can focus on your dreams. Or else just give it up and move on. Pack your bags and put your suit on. I just want to love me. As much as you love me, I just wanna love me. As much as you love me, as much as you love me. I know the sun gon' shine in the morning, but I just wanna love me. As much as you love me, I just wanna love me. As much. Me better level up. I 
I've been awake for a while now. Designer boutique is my style now. It's like I'm floating off the ground now. I'm on another level, Cardi on the bezel, yeah. I get the money and run, I get the money and run. You think I'm falling in love, but it's just no one to blow. I get it, I live it, trying to fit in my world, but it's far from basic. No, I'm not complacent. God is so good, no, you can't replace no, no, no. it. Level up, level up, level up, level up. Holla at me, better measure up. Swerving in the Lambo, rev it up. Level up, level up, level up, level up. Talking money, we can settle up. If you want me, better level up. If you wanna get with me, you better level up. If you wanna get with me, you better level up. Or you cannot get with me if you don't measure up. If you wanna get with me, you better level up. Level up, level up, level up, level up. Holla at me, better measure up. Swerving in the Lambo, rev it up. Level up, level up, level up, level up. Talking money, we can settle up. If you want me, better level up. Whatever I say is 
say you believe in me? Girl, tell me do you believe in me? Girl, tell me do you do you believe in me? Girl, tell me do you do you believe in me? Girl, tell me do you it's a go? Whatever I say, it's a go. All right, doing some uh, Slay the Spire. Gonna have some fun here. We're quarantined. Last time I did a video was a week and a half ago for Shield Wall, and uh, none of this craziness was happening. So, um, if you haven't played um, Slay the Spire, it's pretty fun. And. Um, Anybody who's joining us as we go through, since we're most of us anyway, are just sitting at home doing nothing. If you uh, are in a position where you know the game or want to learn more about it and give me some recommendations, I think that would be good. So uh, let's get going. So I figured what I'd do today is hit a couple different things. One, I, th I think I'll, I have to unlock the Watcher. So. If I go into my standard, I don't have the Watcher unlocked, so I need to do that, and how I do that is I gotta get to the third Spire um, if if possible, so I gotta go through the three different dungeons basically and beat the end boss. I was on vacation, and I almost did it, I was this close, uh, almost had it, and um, when I uh, got to the very end, I lost, I had like two life left, and that was about it, so... Um, I almost had it done, so I'm gonna. We're gonna do it. We'll make a run, and then just kind of hang out. And then if we are in a position to where I have a little more time, I might do a daily run. The daily run has these modifiers, so your starting deck is replaced with one of every rare card, which is a lot of fun to play. It's just a lot of power. You have the Watcher to start, so you can play the Watcher on daily, but you can't play the Watcher on a standard run, which is kind of interesting because I don't know. It's I don't have her unlocked, but I can play her on dailies. So let me just move the chat over here so that I can see changes more readily. And all right, that's not what I want to do. Give me one second. All right. Okay, there we go. That's better. So then you have uh, Vintage, which is normal enemies uh, drop relics instead of cards. Um, and then Big Game Hunter, elite enemies now are swarming the Spire, and they drop better rewards. So there's more elites on this run, which makes sense because you have Shiny, which is your, your deck starts out pretty amazing. So we might do that daily run afterwards, but let's do this first. So I'm just going to start a standard run. And... Um, see how this kind of goes so I'm going to choose the ironclad so um, the ironclad starts with the most health of any hero and again those who haven't seen this game or don't know anything about it um, it's a deck building dungeon crawl roguelike where you earn new cards and new things as you go through uh, each run but it's a 
you, you start with your, it's a deck builder, so you start with your regular cards, and you add cards uh, to it and try to build the, the best deck possible. And there's two big theories in this game. One is, you know, only add power cards, and you don't have to add cards that you don't want to. Um, and so you're not forced to fill your deck, but there's a couple different strategies depending on the hero. One is fill your deck with as much as possible depending on the strategy. And every time I've played this, I play out a little different strategy. With the Ironclad especially, he's your more like, if you think of like a red deck wins, he's your, your the guy that's going to, you know, throw a lot your way and throw put a lot of damage out. Uh, he also has the most health. It could be she too, I guess. I don't know. I don't know the lore of the universe, but... Um, uh, at the end of each combat, so you start with a relic, and the relics are what give you powers as you go, and those are pretty random. When you beat the main spire bosses, you get choices. Um, but uh, the the main relic here gives us at the end of the combat deal six. Uh, or, I'm sorry, heal six uh, hit points. And this is how many points until you get to the next unlock. So as you as you uh, continue to go through the game, you unlock cards and you unlock relics. So that's how you just get stronger and stronger. Um, so it's pretty cool. And then um, I've only got one unlock left, actually. And then I'll have all of the cards possible that could show up through a, an adventure or a journey. And then um, for the silent, I've a different style, doing more poisoning, a little more backstabby stuff. Um, the defect has um, it runs chain reactions off of these orbs. They've all got they all play very different, which is kind of cool. So every time we embark, let's take a look here. You go on, you get this three-eyed whale, um, and he gives you something. And so um, we can choose a card to obtain. change my volume there so you can choose a, a card to obtain obtain three random potions which uh, isn't great but these are where the potion slots go lose uh, eight max HP and get a rare colorless card colorless cards are pretty powerful lose your starting relic obtain a boss relic this starting relic's pretty good it heals a six I don't want to lose that especially we don't do a ton of blocking potentially so we could just choose an additional card let's just do that I guess Thunderclap, deal 4 damage, and apply 1 vulnerable to all enemies. Metallicize, at the end of your turn, gain 3 block. That's not bad. It's a power that kind of keeps us... That's actually a pretty good card, considering I'm always looking for that. And then uh, gain 10 block for 1, and that's Aetheral. Uh, Aetheral is, if the card is in your hand at the end of the turn, it goes away. It exhausts. Exhausted cards are removed from your deck until the end of the combat. Um, I like this metallicize. It gives us some protection. Let's let's run with that. It's very important to look at the the track you're going to take here. So we could do here question mark question mark question mark. We only fight two monsters this way. Get to here and maybe upgrade if we can keep our life. Go one, upgrade. I kind of like this. And then bounce over to this side. Let's do that. I kind of like this track. It maybe seems a little cheesy, but that's all part of it. It's all part of the experience. Sometimes you got to go with some cheese. All right, so this is just all-out bash. He's going to hit us for 11. So we want to try to avoid that, if possible. Deal 8 damage. Apply 2 vulnerable. That's going to take up all of our resources here. Hmm. We want to block some of the damage. Um, and I say we try to let's let's play a little more conservative. Although we're not fighting many, let's let's try to block most of it. We're going to be able to do enough damage to him. The next hand will be a big attack damage. All right, we can metallicize to add the block. Let's do that. Um, this will block all the damage then. So 
So that's good. And still hitting for 11. This guy just kind of goes all out. Yeah. We're just going to play it safe here. I want to keep as much health as I can. We can give up 6 because we'll heal 6 at the end of the turn. But I want to kind of keep as much as I possibly can and just play defensively. Okay, he's not attacking us, so now we can go into an all-out assault here. Down to 14. So he added some strength, so he's going to hit harder. So we got to hit him for 20 here with his 6 if we can. I can't hit him for 20. So we'll do that, and we'll hit him for as much as we can, though. Take him down to 2. We're going to take a little bit of damage, but we'll heal it back. So now we're in good shape. And now we gotta hit him for seven. Six, seven. So you see kind of how this how this works. Hey. <laughs> good old Your What Hurts. Goes by another name. <laughs> have you ever played Slay the Spire? It's fun, man. Especially being a solo gamer, I think you'd really like it. Alright. Sentinel gain 5 block this turn. If the card is exhausted, gain 2. I actually really like that too. This is kind of leading us in a different way. Huh. Hmm. Wait, did I just take that? Oh, I did. Okay, I'm actually okay with that. So we can gain five block, and then at any point we can exhaust this card, it'll give us two. I kind of like that, because that, that allows us a little bit of defense and attack. So that's decent. I'll take that. All right, so now we're going to go... We're not going to go here. I, I want to be able to upgrade, so we're going to try to survive as much damage as we can here. So let's go... Let's hit these unknowns the whole way through. Yeah, it's really good, man. It's a lot of fun. Max XP, I think that's a good way to go. Obtain a relic, become cursed. Um, I think we're going to be good on relics. Let's do some max XP, or, or uh, HP, I should say. Yeah, it's fun. It's a deck building, dungeon crawl, roguelike. Like, it's it's really solid, man. It's a really solid game. I'm running with uh, one guy now who kind of is an attacker. You work through these dungeons... Um, you get to the spire and you do this three times and you beat the game. When you beat the game, you unlock a bunch of stuff and you get to go do it again. Um, and you kind of keep making these runs, but each run feels so different the way you play your cards and everything. And you can get this on sale for like usually 10, 12 bucks on Steam. It's pretty, pretty cheap. All right, here's another adventure or another unknown. Before you lies an elite uh, shrine. Okay, so we get to pray and remove a card from our deck. Yes, we will remove a defense card. It's usually what I'll do. So this is how you thin your deck out. Ah, so we got a surprise attack here. We got jumped. All right. Well, um, we could take him out right away. That's nice. We don't have to defend ourselves and then start working on him. Let's see what we get here. Say so we haven't done many videos of Shield Wall just because of everything going on. Not, hopefully, it's not affecting everybody out there too too bad. So if this card exhausts, we'll get two. Hmm. I kind of want the block though. I just want to stay healthy all the way through if possible. Now we're weakened, so we won't be doing that much damage. All right, so we'll take two damage here, and I'll hit him for a little bit more, and then that weaken will wear off. But hopefully everybody's... I, I, I've never really seen anything like this, and I know there's a lot of people who haven't. It's pretty crazy. Not attacking us this turn, so we can afford to be a little greedy here. We can bash him and hit for five, although we'll still gain. And then we should be able to finish him next turn. He's got two vulnerable on him now. Um, sure. 
All right, good stuff. Now this will allow us... Okay, let's take a look. So this gains a strength. This is a must. I always... Oh, I love Battle Trance, too. Hmm. Between these two, I think Battle Trance is the way to go because it gives us defense options when we need to defend. So as we... One thing with Ironclad that I've noticed as I've played is I'm looking for defense cards that I've picked up and I need to defend on a turn versus attack because I can't hit enough attack to really make a difference. And so... I get into this place where I'm like, I just need defense cards and I'm not drawing them. So Battle Trances allows us to do that. So now all we got to do is really stay alive here. We can upgrade. Okay, this shouldn't be too bad. So he does these rituals. This is the cultist. He does a ritual that he puts a little feather down here and then he'll gain strength every turn. So this should be okay. He's not attacking us this time. Let's see what happens when this exhausts. I think I gain it for the next turn, I hope. Let's just try it. Let's make him vulnerable. Let's do that. And then that way, we can really go all out. It didn't exhaust. Okay, so I, I get it now. I've got to find a way to exhaust it. That's what's happening. Hmm. So that card's near, all of a sudden not as good. Oh, yeah. I guess that makes sense. That was stupid of me. If I... if. If this card is exhausted, gain two. So I have to I have to do something to exhaust it. So really, it's just a gain five block right now, unless I can find a way to exhaust it. Okay, that's that card is not nearly as good as I thought. All right, so um, yeah, we're good here. We've got vulnerable. We're doing nine damage. Um, sure, we'll take one. I'm gonna skip the battle trance. We didn't need to draw into that. I probably could have battle trance there and drew, but. I don't really see us having any issues with him. So now he's doing nine. We could metallicize, but he's... Oh, he doesn't have the vulnerable anymore. Six, 12, yeah. Yeah, so we're quite good here. Good turn, good turn, good turn, good round. Does this... <laughs> no, no flash pods. Not that I'm... I, you, know, I'm you know what's funny is... The... <laughs> The one, <laughs> so, <laughs> the one, uh, the one, the one hero that you play with uh, definitely has, uh, like he's got electric balls that hang over top of him, and uh, when you you invoke those and they do like damage, and I thought of Tim when I first saw that thing because it certainly looks like a flash pod hanging over his head. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. All right, skill potion, choose one of three random skill cards. So this is just a random, basically a random card draw, but you get to choose and they play for zero. All right, heavy blade's really good if you can get your strength up. I don't have anything to get my strength up right now. So um, cleave does eight damage to all enemies, and then uppercut deal 13 damage one week. That's a little expensive for this currently. Sometimes creating weak is important because the enemies will hit a lot less, but... We get sometimes the little guys. We need to have one way to do a lot of damage to a, a bunch of things. So we're going to go ahead and take that. And now we get to rest, which is good. This is part of this dungeon thing. We're at full health, so we don't need to do that. So we will upgrade a card. What does Metallicize upgrade to? This is where I could use help. Although you, most of the, whoever's watching, for the most part, probably hasn't. Um... Uh, sorry about the. Every time I leave the game to mess with OBS, it it uh, flashes the game out. Okay, so every turn gain four block for metallicize upgrade. And again, if we're gonna go full attack, this is an important card. Um, Sentinel gains eight block for one, and if we find a way to exhaust it, which I don't currently have, so this was a bad pickup. This might be a card I remove as we go down the line here, and then. Um, what well, Battle Trance draws four cards on the upgrade. Cleave will do 11 damage to all enemies. That's actually probably a pretty powerful upgrade. Um, yeah, good question. I, so, it just depends. It's all random. There's usually, especially in the... I'm just in the first, the first spire right now. When you get to the second and third spire, it's quite a few times. Yeah, I think Cleave's probably the way to go. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, Tim. I wasn't going to call you Tim until Matt outed you as Tim. So now, now we have to. All right, so I'll do cleave. That's probably the best call. All right, so let's hit here, and we'll get to upgrade again based on the path that I chose. Again, I, I kind of chose the cheese path, but the cheese path is... All right, now this guy, actually, you'll get him down to so much damage. Um, so he has split, so when he gets down to... Uh, his HP is 50% or low, he'll split into two. So this is where Cleave actually can become powerful, because when there's two blobs, I'm doing 11 to each instead of just 11 to one. So Cleave's a good pick up there. All right, he's not attacking us this turn. Um... God, Sentinel is just a waste in my hand right now. So let's just go ahead and do this. I don't need to defend. Uh, I want to get rid of this card now. Uh, maybe we go the exhaust route later on. Okay. <laughs> oh, I miss you guys. Listen, we're all going to be quarantined. Matt, are you working from home? I don't. I don't remember if you answered my text. If we're all quarantined, we should get back into gaming something for sure. Um, oh, we're gonna. I, just, I mean, this doesn't do us any good, but we might as well not waste. We don't get to keep our energy going to the next turn. All right, so he gave me frail, which means that I take. If I were to defend, I'd defend less. So instead of five, I'd defend three. Oh yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Are you guys uh, supplying those N95s to uh, the hospitals and such that I've been seeing? Let's battle trance. Let's draw here and see what else we can get. I can give him weak. I think metallicize is important. Get that out of the way. We can just strike twice. I give him vulnerable, but I can't do anything else with vulnerable. Because it's cost two. Um... I mean, I guess it's, uh, versus doing 12 damage, but he'll have vulnerable the next turn. So he'll get two vulnerable. So let's do that. So now he'll take 50% more damage from me the next turn, depending on what he's doing, since we didn't have to defend. And we can cycle our deck here. Making it hard for me to block. What's nice is I don't think metallicize. You gain three blocks, so the frail he's adding to me here doesn't matter, which is kind of nice. All right, so there's Cleave again, and unnecessary. Okay, so now he's coming at us with 16 attack, and he's got a status he's going to try to hit. But we Cleave will hit him for 16 because he's got Frail. And I may just do that and then block up here. So we're only getting 6 out of it. Oh, he's splitting because we did 50% damage to him, so... <laughs> so, I mean, is it possible for you to send Tim and I some N95s, or how does that work? What do we got to do to get an N95 or two? I saw today that they were talking about, why can't we just sterilize them? Like, why do we have to throw them away right after we use them? Like, we have so many, I mean, you can't Lysol them, right? Is Bless any good? Bless isn't any good? Or, I mean... Hmm. Talk to me about that. Did you and King start playing? Well, that didn't come out yet, right? It's not April. What's the game that you guys were trying to get me into? All right, I got to concentrate here. Okay, so this is where we would want Cleave, Matt, and we don't have it. That's the part of a deck builder. Let's see if we can draw out Cleave. Come from our discard pile. Hey, look at that. That's nice. Don't need to block. Let's just let's just finish. Uh, well, let's split it out evenly for right now. There we go. We only got four in the draw pile, so we could actually draw cleave again. No to all the questions. <laughs> yeah, I'm just trying to. I want to get into something. I just there's nothing out there that makes me feel like I like I'm like I don't have that whole like. Those feelings of like, oh my god, I gotta play this game. Alright, these guys are just trying to 
keep me from blocking here. And they're coming. That means he's coming with a big attack, so we should be good. All right. Oh, he's coming with a little attack. Eight. All right, cool. Got through that. 11 gold. Here's what we're adding. So Whirlwind, deal five damage to all enemies X times. And for those of you who don't play card games that much, which would be probably Matt right now, um, essentially um, that X is how much energy you pay is how much you'd be able to do that. So if I pay three energy to pay, play this card, I deal five damage to all those enemies three times, which is actually a pretty good card. But it's just a timing card. Deal damage equal to your block. Eh. We're not running a defensive build. Oh, yeah. PC's always better for this stuff. And then Blood for Blood is decent. Cost one each time you lose HP this combat. So for every time we lose health, I mean, this basically at some point in the match becomes a zero cost, 18 damage. And that's a pretty good card to upgrade as well. As well. I might, But it's a wasted card early in the game. And the way we've been playing here, I'm keeping full health basically. So not too sure if that's where we want to go. I kind of like what we have right now. There's no legendaries here. I, I, I kind of like what we have. I feel like these two slow us down right now. And we're gonna we're gonna go into an upgrade. I wonder what this card upgrades though too. Ah, we'll take this. We'll take blood for blood, and then let's go upgrade a card. We find this hard to believe, but the Division Two Warlords of New York is really good. Also, gear. I okay. So unless I have some type of definitive proof that they have figured out the whole um, end game stuff with um, you know you know what it was like. We were we were going into. Uh, whatever that difficulty level was, um, challenging a challenging uh, post, and it would be virtually impossible to finish. And then, next thing you know, we go back into it. And we finish it like it's like it's on easy. And I'm sure I'm hope I'm hoping they fix that. But when I saw the that that stuff come out and DC outskirts, I think too, right? When I saw those come out, I was like, oh, okay, that, that's pretty cool. Um, but everything I was seeing was that the end game is still a problem. And so I still have a problem with it then. All right, what is it? Oh, okay. So this starts at three for 22 damage. I think we got to upgrade that one. That makes that card way better. And, you know, as we climb the mountain here, we are going to be taking damage. We've just been taking the cheesy route right now. Battle Trance, Sentinel. I kind of want to get rid of Sentinel. And then Metallicize. The 4 block is something we will have to upgrade. I think this is a good upgrade here. <laughs> well, Tim loves it, so that's plausible. I'm just kidding. No, I I love Division. I love Division 2. I thought there was a lot of really good things they did. Um, I think the... I think all the drops for the mods were ridiculous, and I think could have been done a different way. Um, we're going to upgrade Blood for Blood. Um, I don't know. All right, so we got chests. This is how we planned this route. And here's our relic, the sundial. Every three times you shuffle your draw pile, we gain two resources. That's a really good relic to have. And so that will count off. So every And, and this, is, this will be a good relic now. To, to keep a low card count. So we don't want to we don't want to add, you know, our deck right now is only 14 cards. The lower this is, the more we activate this relic, the better we are off. PSO2. I don't know what PSO2 is. Oh, Fantasy Star, right? Yeah. Fantasy Star 2. All right, our path is going to be here to these question marks here. The other option is to go get after... Now, see, we couldn't... One, two, three. They always say never go three enemies in a row. It's just too hard. So here, I kind of want to get an elite in before we go to the boss, but let's just go. Uh, I think we're good. 
Oh, we're going to fight these mushrooms anyway. So we could anger the mushrooms and stop on them, or we could heal 21 hit points and become cursed. Let's. Uh, we're going to anger them. <laughs> these are mushrooms that have grown into, through dead rats. <laughs> well, so this is a fight. At least we get, a, we, we get some gold out of this, probably. Um, do not have cleave in the opening hand. Getting hit for six, so metallicize feels right. Bulletproof mass murder. It got boring. The new DLC and gear changes are worth another look. Yeah, I, I, I'm not opposed to it. I'm not opposed to looking at Division 2. I still have it on my, my main. Um, Alright, so we want to take some damage. I don't want to block all of this. I want to take at least three damage so that this goes down in cost for the next time. I was hoping we would get cleave here. We didn't. So we've got two resources. Let's take, we'll take a little bit of damage. We'll take three damage and see what this does. Tim, I didn't know you started a new job. That's pretty cool. There's cleave. That's a good look. Okay, so now this is cost two, so that worked good. Now we're getting. Now we need to block a little better, so that helps. Uh, we can finish him. Uh, he's not attacking us though. We could take six more damage and activate the card one more time. Leave him alive. He's going to use a buff on himself and the others. And let's kill. Let's finish him so that way we're not taking that nine damage instead of blocking. And that feels better. We got vulnerable now. Oh, gosh. Why do we get vulnerable added? He must have had an ability that added vulnerable. Mm. Oh, on death applies to vulnerable. Yeah. Okay, well, now we're getting hit for 13. So we're getting hit for 10 minus our defense. I didn't calculate that. That's not good. Oh, I see. Okay. All right, now we got to do something. Cleave came back into play, so one's dead. That's good. Oh, we're good. All right, so we took a little bit of damage there. We'll heal six at the end. That's the relic. Can't play Division Two again. Our backs are still hurting from carrying 90% of the game. <laughs> I'll tell you what, man. That was something. Like, there there was a point where, like, like I, I felt bad. <laughs> There was a point where I felt bad. I felt bad because I wanted to help people, but it was also like somebody would jump in, say, hey, can you guys help me get through this? We would do that, and then they'd bolt. And I'm like, well, like I just spent that time, and then they would tell somebody about it, then they'd jump on because they knew we were on, and then we rarely got to do things on our own. So, I mean, it was a lot of fun. I enjoyed playing it. Okay, so the odd mushroom's good. Um, when I am vulnerable, I take 25% more attack damage rather than 55, 50%. So if they add vulnerable to me now, it, it's not as bad of a thing. Okay, rup, rupture. Nah. Body slam. Deal damage. You, no. Thunderclap. Deal four damage. Apply. No. So we are not taking a card after all that. We're going to keep our deck thin here with 14. Um, okay, we got to get through this guy. We're at 78. Ugh, oh, more of these things. Well, at least vulnerable now is going to be a... Definitely got to do that. Um, we'll take three damage to lower the cost of that card. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> or or leave to go play another game. That was the other thing that I noticed was happening. It was like, well, I just want to stay up with everybody, but I don't really want to play this. And it's like, well, then what are you doing? Because then they would do that. We'd, we'd gear them up, and then, yeah, they'd go play with another group, or they'd, I'd see them play another game. And I'm like, I mean, which is fine, I guess, but... All right, need to kill him. 15. Um... That's Matt Juggler's Cleave. 
that is helping me with that. Appreciate that. All right. And let's just defend here. Battle Trance doesn't do us any good. I don't want to draw... Um, let's see, what's in our discard? So Blood for Blood is in our discard. Uh, there's only 13 damage left. So let's draw these four cards so that we can get a better... Or three cards. Yeah, get these out of our draw pile. Now we'll draw one, and then we got a chance at getting that back when we come back around. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is roguelike. Um, the, the roguelike aspect of it is different, though. It's you go through your run, and you earn... Um, so it's a deck, you know, deck building, dungeon crawl, roguelike. So after you go through your run, uh, you earn points towards what they call unlocks. And unlocks are cards that you wouldn't have had access to on the run and relics you wouldn't have had access to. So it makes you strong. Now, each character has its own number of unlocks. I've only actually got one more unlock with Ironclad, and then I'll have him completely unlocked, meaning I'll have access to randomly getting all of the cards. It's really cool. I mean, if uh, that's what I said. Like, Tim, Tim loves solo board games. Like, that's what this is. It's a solo deck builder, it's, and, and the synergies are really cool, and you can play them any way you want. You see the types of cards coming across, and those cards are, you know, kind of... Like they're kind of, you can see the different strategies. Some were more defensive, some are more, and then the other two heroes just completely changed the game even more. All right, well let's do that. There it is. There's blood for blood. Finish him with one swoop there. Fire potion, so we can deal 20 damage just by throwing this at something. And let's see what we get. Headbutt, second wig. Exhaust all non-attack cards in your hand. Gain five block for each card exhausted. So basically, there's still three. Uh, you know what? It might be. So, um, yeah, this is on... I'm playing this on PC, obviously. It always goes on sale on Steam. This is on... Um, it's on Switch, for sure. But it's full price on Switch. I've never seen it go down on Switch. And I think it's on Xbox. I don't know if it's on PS4. But, yeah, it certainly could be. I've told several people about it. I mean, this game is really, really good. This is a game, like... It's it's so funny. Like, there was, there was an article the other day from, like, Wired or something... That said, uh, you know, they're going to sue the makers of this company because they've made the game so addicting. And you wouldn't think it would be. You'd, you'd think that this is a game, oh, I'm going to play it for an hour, just kind of chill out, you know, and, uh, and you know, see, w see what the gimmicks are and then move from there. This is, it's a lot of depth. So it's really cool. So this would be a way to exhaust that card to get the, I don't, how many other non-attack cards do I have? So I've got a power, and I've got these skills, and my defends are all skills, and battle trance is skill. I, I just don't like that trade-off. I don't like this trade-off. Headbutt, deal 9 damage, put a card from your discard pile on top of your draw pile, eh. Deal 12 damage, apply 2 weak. That's decent if its upgrade is a cost of 1 instead of 2. I can't... I think on the map I'm upgrading next. Oh. I bet you it's not, though. I bet you if I... This is where someone who's really good at the game would go, Oh, yeah, this upgrade's worth whatever. So that's the new Wolfenstein? Didn't they remake that already? Alright, what do I do here? Do I pass on it and keep us at that 14? Do I... I mean, the two weak is nice, because we will start needing weak with the bigger enemies we're going to be facing. I just don't know. Oh, the Wolfstein board game. I did. Okay, I did see that. Yeah, I did see that. I imagine if you're interested in it, it has solo play. I didn't look at that part of it, but that's pretty cool. I'm not getting second wind. The question here is do I take clothesline? Two cost, 12 damage, two weak. And weak is it makes their damage 50% less. How is the solo on that game? Have you seen like a run through of it or anything? All right, let, we're gonna do clothesline. Let's see if we can upgrade it uh, coming into here. So yeah, we're gonna go this way. Hopefully we don't get jumped. Didn't get jumped. 
You spot a loose brick within a pillar that catches your eye. Alright, there's some kind of writing in there. Ooh. Iron Wave's decent. You find a folded note and a card inside. It reads, The Heart Awaits. This is your handwriting. That's pretty cool. I've never seen this one before. <laughs> so you receive an Iron Wave and store a card. So let's store a strike since we're doing an Iron Wave that does attack and block. What is going on? Leave. That's pretty cool. I like the, the dungeon crawl aspect. It's very limited in this, but it's it's cool. I mean, it's got its... It's not without its charm. Let's say that. Oh, God, here you go. This is the Matt Jurgler special. Oh, my God. That's amazing. <laughs> We're going to kill three of them with one card. Yes. Yes, Matt. It's worked. It has worked. Hopefully he didn't log off. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. <laughs> Here we go. This one's for you, Matt. All right. So this is what I was talking about when you're like, how often do you run into those? Eh, every once in a while. <laughs> All right. So we're going to... Uh, we'll get rid of this guy. We'll take three damage here. I still have... A, actually, you know what? Let me battle trance, see what's... Okay. So yeah, definitely metallicize. And then we'll kill. And then that'll actually block that damage. That Metallicize card is another one we got to upgrade because that one's actually been, I think, saving us a lot of damage. Wow, this was... Boy, that made that pretty easy. Alright, one of three random power cards. So just so you know what these are. Skill cards, we get one of three random skill cards we add to our hand, it costs zero. And same thing with a power card, we add it to our hand, it costs zero. So... Um, these can be pretty good in a pinch when you need some, some kind of card draw. Ooh, there's our first legendary. Saw King of Average did an unboxing of the demo they sent him. Should be a playthrough soon. That's good. Does your energy increase? Yes, so when we defeat, when we defeat the first... Um, when we defeat the first, uh, like I guess, Sentinel or the first Spire leader of the first level, which we'll be doing here in a second... Um, you get most. You get an option of three relics, and usually at least two of them have a way to start with more energy. But um, when the sometimes some of them have a very negative effect. So some of them are like, "Hey, start with an extra energy," but this happens. Some of them are are pretty good. Some of them are actually, "Hey, start with an extra energy, and you get something else," which is kind of cool. Um, and then some of them, you know, some of them are just other other relics that you get, but they're pretty much like powerful elite relics. Uh, and then there are, of course, like, there's a lot of cards that can offer that. Ironclad doesn't have as many. Um, the Silent is more of a, like, a, he's like, a, he does poison and he does more backstabby stuff. Uh, he's got a lot more, like, hey, discard two cards, increase this, and or draw an extra two, discard one, get one more energy. Like, there's a lot of, like, uh, you could almost call it, like, janky stuff, but it's a lot more, like, playing around puzzly style. Put a card from your exhaust pile into your hand and then exhaust this. We haven't been exhausting many cards. It's not really a good legendary for us. This would be a great legendary for if we were running kind of a different strategy here. Gain seven block, exhaust one card at random. That doesn't do us any good because we have one card that we'd like to exhaust and the odds of it being random are terrible. And then another clothesline. I don't really want to do another clothesline because I still don't know if I could upgrade the other clothesline I have to give me a plus one or take this to a one cost, or if it just increases the stats on it. Oh, I'm thinking of skipping this. We don't have many exhausts. Now, we could get exhaust cards. I mean, we as we move through and we continue to get options, like when we defeat the Spire, uh, we will get an option of three legendary cards. A lot of those are do one really powerful thing and then exhaust it. And exhaust it means you can't use it for the rest of that combat, but it comes back to your deck every comp, every inter every engagement. So it's always part of your main uh, number here. But uh, in in game, if it get it gets exhausted, you just can't use it for the rest of that combat. This almost feels too good to kind of pass up based on what we could be doing. I'm hoping we see. There's one that's called Seeing Red. You pay one cost, you can upgrade it for, and it'll make it a zero cost. You gain two resources, or gain two energy. 
Um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. The block cards are overshield that just prevent damage before it gets to you. Um, let's go ahead and take the exhume, and maybe we won't regret it. I don't know. So we got one combat, and then we get to go and upgrade something and or rest, depending on how this combat goes. Resting heals you 30% of your life force. This guy sucks because he just he's a, th a thug. And why that's... He steals 15 gold on every attack. You get it back when you kill him. But what really sucks about him is he's always hitting for 10 plus, And he can do things to increase. So he's never going to give us a break where we can just attack him. Right? So th th we're probably going to take some damage here. So here's that clothesline. Hmm. <clears throat> We could defend half of the damage. I think we might do this. Let's close line. Let's make him. Let's make him weaker, so he's not doing as much. And then we'll do that iron wave we picked up. So that gives us that what you were saying overshield basically. But there's the five block, and um, he's going to hit us for you know seven minus that, so he'll hit us for two here. And that weak makes him 25% less damage. And then each one of those counts off, so he's only got one weak left. You know, it's still there. So Exhume is absolutely a dead card in my hand that does no good at all. So is Sentinel. Hitting for 7. Alright, so, I mean, we'll just do this. This actually isn't... It's going to take a little damage from him, but it's not too bad. Yes, he would. Yeah, he would be. Oh, so now, actually, look at that. That's the first time I think I've seen that. I'm sure he has. I, I just missed it, but now... So now it looks like after he gets so low, now he's going to try to defend. So this gives us a chance to, well, just kill him with that card, maybe? Maybe just one-shot him? Yes, but he would be. One that's constantly attacking, you need to slow them up. So this is he stole 30 gold from us. So we're stealing it back. And then here's a blood potion. Heal for 20% of the max HP. You can only hold three potions. So I think we're going to get rid of this deal 20 damage. Let's discard this, because being able to heal is pretty important as we go through. And then we get Dark Embrace. Whenever a card is exhausted, which again, right now we don't really have a way to exhaust a card unless it is that. We draw a card. So that's a power. So a power is something you add to yourself, and you get it the entire combat. A skill is something you do that's not attacking, and then of course an attack is an attack. One Vulnerable. And there's Heavy Blade again. This, this card is really, really strong. There's a card called Demon Power. It's cost three, it's expensive, but when you play it, your strength goes up two every single turn. And so then, as the game goes on, basically every attack card you have just keeps boostering up and up and up and up and up. But we just, we're not doing that kind of build here because we haven't seen those cards. So I think we're going to skip. I think we're going to keep this the same. We're going to upgrade a card here because we are at full health. So I think Metallicize is certainly a candidate. And then Clothesline. Oh, Clothesline is the same price. <laughs> that is not what I wanted out of that. <laughs> I was really hoping Clothesline would go to... I mean, that's this is a powerful two card, though. I think I kind of like Metallicize here. What do you guys think? I don't know if Tim's still with us. I'm going to change the music here real quick. Alright. I think we're going to go Metallicize. It gives us, if we play that, we play five turns. That's 20 block across those turns versus 15 blocks. So we're getting an extra 5 block. Is that worth the upgrade slot, which you can't do as often? Hmm. Zoom costs 0. That's actually a pretty good... That's a pretty good upgrade if it does anything for our deck right now, which it doesn't. And then we have Battle Trance, too. What are our thoughts? A little bit more block each turn when we get this card and able to play the power. Iron Wave also we can upgrade. Does 7 block, 7 damage. Iron Wave is a pretty good card. Hmm. I'm glad we didn't take that second clothesline. Ten, 
10 damage, 3 vulnerable. Why does it feel like Clothesline is so much more powerful than that card? Alright, I think we're going to do Metallicize. Going once. Bought a new Alienware PC last week. I should have it mid-April. Oh, yeah, dude. Now, listen. Wait, Diablo 4? Wait, what? Wait, what are you talking about? Diablo 4 is not coming out mid-April. You're talking mid-April 2021? I mean, I, I am doing Diablo 4. There's no doubt about that. Oh, for when it comes out. <laughs> well, yeah, of course. <laughs> I thought you were trying to say that, listen, I got this new PC so I could have it mid-April for Diablo 4. <laughs> okay. Yeah, like Diablo 4 is not coming out for like five years. I'm fairly certain of it. I'm like, unless there was something I missed... I got you. Yeah, that makes sense. I haven't. Been, I, that's what I thought you were saying. <laughs> no, I, I, I thought. I thought that's. What, I thought that's what you were saying. I knew you were saying at the computer, but then you were like Diablo Four and PC do it, and I'm like thinking, oh my god, is it? Did they change something? Is it coming out this April? I've got to change a lot of priorities if it's coming out in a month. But no, it's not. All right, we're gonna do Metallicize. All right, so here we go. So this is the first Spire boss. So these guys are random, and they're all pretty nasty. This guy's not too bad, actually. I'm glad I see him instead of the... There's this one big knight that's just a pain. Okay, yeah, Diablo... Oh, oh, my God. I'm really excited about Diablo 4, though. I feel like I feel like there's going to be some good... I mean, I think they're really going to fix a lot of good things. All right, so what this guy does is he's got this thing called uh, Mode Shift. After he receives 30 damage, he goes down into a ball. And then the ball turns into, it has these things called thorns. So every time, just like kind of just like Diablo 3, right? Every time he takes, I do any damage to him, I take 3 damage. So this guy's pretty easy to kill. He, he does all his damage to you and how you attack him. And us being an attacking character and not a defending character, that's going to create some, some challenge. But So we could certainly add vulnerable to him. Uh, weak doesn't really do anything for me right now with this guy. Um, we definitely want to get to our Metallicize because we need to be able to defend his damage and we got to be able to defend the damage we're going to be doing to ourselves from attacking him. Um, but let's do that and let's give him that now. At least he'll be weak next turn. So now 13 more damage and he'll ball up. But he's going to add he's going to add some defense here. The good thing is you can distract him from his big attack if you can hit him for enough. So here he's doing 32. As long as we can do 13, 24 damage to him, we can prevent this from happening. Um, oh, but I want to metallicize. All right, so that's not going to do quite enough. Well, wait, no, tw uh, 20, 22, right? Twenty-three. Thirteen. What's thirteen plus nine? Twenty-three. Yeah. Shoot. So this doesn't do us any good. This leaves him with one damage left and him hitting us for thirty-two. We can't defend nearly enough that we want to. Ugh. Boy, this is a pickle. But we could defend... Um, We could defend nine of it. We're just we're just gonna take the damage. I think. I think we gotta go on the defend. The defend zone. And then we'll hit him with a cleave. This kind of sucks. That's not how I wanted that to go. So we just took twenty three. Now the good thing is, after we beat him, when you finish a run, you can leave it all out there. We can also heal mid mid combat, but we can leave it all out there. And w as long as we survive with one health, we go all the way back up to eighty five, and we start the next dungeon, the next I guess spire run you could call it. So that's a good thing. All right, yes, absolutely do that. All 
Don't need to block. Well, okay. We're, we're just, so here he goes into the shift mode. So we want to be able to do as much damage as possible right now. Did we already shuffle to get in there too? Yeah, we did. And our last one doesn't really matter. God, I wish I could find a way to exhaust that card. So now he'll go into his defense mode, and here's his sharp hide. So every attack now, so that's what we want to try to get big attacks. Every attack will take three damage. So we kind of want to keep that in mind. Um... Alright, man, yeah, no problem. Thanks for stopping in for a little bit. Appreciate it. Um, we could give him weak. Let's do this first so that we can defend that three damage and weaken him. And then we'll add four. We'll block what he's going to give us. So that works out perfect. So blood for blood now is big. So that's good. Now he's doing 12 damage. He's hitting us twice for uh, six... Um, six times twice for 12. Mm. <laughs> Alright, I think we got to do this. Yeah, we gotta do that. Took the three damage. And then we're gonna take three more damage. Oof. Ah, I, I, I'm checking it out. We'll take three here. Alright, so now he goes back into mode shift. So we, do, we get 40, we can avoid this. I don't think I can do 40 damage to him here. We can weaken him. The other option is we can add a power or a skill. Let's do that. He's still got 171 health. Okay, exhaust one card, draw two cards. Oh, this is actually good because now we can exhaust Sentinel. Ooh, this is actually really good for us. Uh, enemy loses two strength, no... Double your block, no. Check this out. Okay, this will be zero. So that was the potion we drank that did this, by the way. Um, so now we can exhaust one card. So let's pick Sentinel to exhaust. When this exhausts, we're going to get three resource or two more resources. And we're going to draw two. So we should be able to empty everything out after playing Battle Trance. So here we go. This is a good combo. And what's nice, too, is... I don't want to pay one to exhume, but this is where we could exhume that card back into our deck... All right, so let's hit there. Let's... Now, we don't have a lot of amazing attack cards here. Um, I'm going to hit us for 12. We're going to defend 9. Is it worth the 6 damage? Let's go ahead and block. Still a good turn. He's still at 143. We need we need to get some heavier hitting cards going into this next run, or we're going to be in trouble. Oh. Another burning pact. Hmm. Let's do this. Um, yep, let's do that. Let's get rid of that. Draw two. Okay. Mm, dang. So this will hit for 11. So this will be 16 total damage, which is better than that. So, yeah, let's do that. Okay, so the good thing is here, we get a free... Uh, um, no, he's going to the defense mode now. So now he's doing the... Yeah, that's what... Um, that's what Matt said, yeah, that it's on Game Pass, which is pretty good. 
Uh, let's battle trance. Blood for blood. Oh, let's defend first. So that we're not taking the three damage for free from him. That was a good attack there. See, is, is this what I'm saying with Exhum? It's just sitting in my hand. It's just sitting in my hand doing nothing. Ugh. This is going to be a tight one. This is going to be a tight one. Oh, nice. That was a good shuffle and draw right there. Um, I don't know if I... It's not going to transform. Alright, let's exhaust our powers here and see what power card we can get. Oh, there's two legendaries. That's kind of nice. These are only temporary, though, which sucks. Gain two vulnerable at the end of your start. Gain another resource each turn. I don't know if we want two vulnerable with him hitting the way he is. Whenever you gain block, deal five damage to your random enemy. That's actually amazing because we deal block every turn. So that's perfect. I didn't even read the other card, but I liked that one so much that... Boy, that would be an amazing card to have in our hand, or our deck, the way that we have... We run... Um, uh, metallicize like that. All right, so we um, exhausted our deck off of the sundial, so we have five resources now. Let's defend. Let's hit blood for blood, because every time we're hitting him, he's doing three damage to us. Let's go ahead and weaken him. Let's cleave. We're taking damage here and strike, and now he's on the forty-three, and he just did five more damage because we gained. All right, can we do 38 damage this turn? I don't think so. It has for 12. So let's gain five block. We're at nine block. Uh, let's just defend a little bit more this turn. Give him down to 17. He loses the week, though, or after this turn. So we're good there. That was good. Now we just got to be able to do 12. I need two strikes. There we go. And it's under 18. That sucks. The worst is when you're like, you do that, and he goes into his thing again. All right. Nice. Thanks for your help, fellas. That was the uh, first round. So I don't know if Matt's still on, but this is where you'll see. So we got another blood potion, which is good. Now we get an option of legendaries, and you'll see we'll get a chest with relics in it. Uh, Fiend the Fire is good. It exhausts everything in your hand. You deal 7 damage for each card exhausted. The problem is we're running a very thin deck. So when we're exhausting cards, it's hurting us and our abilities to do things. If we had a deck of 25 cards, this is a great card. Um, feed is okay. Deal 10 damage. If it's fatal, you raise your max HP. That was only... <laughs> Thanks, Tim. Appreciate it. And then Reaper, deal 4 damage to all enemies, heal HP equal to unblocked damage. That's actually a really good card, especially if we get it down. We'll take Reaper, and it'll be a good card to help us heal. And then here is our options. So, Runic Pyramid, at the end of your turn, you no longer discard your hand. This is a really good relic for us to get, because it allows us to, to plan for each turn. Because usually all Duck Builders, you discard your entire hand. This one allows us to uh, keep our entire hand there, and then we can we can have options of combos in our hands already. Astro Blade is one of the best relics in the game, so this is these are all really good. You transform three cards, and then you upgrade them. So this is one they say always is an auto get. Um, this one replaces blur Burning Blood at the beginning at the end of the combat, deal twelve damage. So Burning Blood is uh, your heal. Um, sorry, six uh, twelve damage. So this one heals six damage at the end of combat. Um, this one would replace this one and heal twelve damage. Boy, this is tough. So th this is an example. This is the first time I think I've ever seen where at the end where you don't get one that can increase your, your energy. Usually you have at least two here. Um, but these are both like amazing relics. So thinking of how our deck's going, transforming the cards and upgrading them could be risky. Now, I'd be transforming strikes and defends. So that's why that's such a good card. You only get to really discard cards when you go to shops or get take them out of your deck. Or you, some random events allow you to do it. So this allows you basically to take your three worst cards, transform them into something, and upgrade them. But they could transform and upgrade into something that doesn't have the synergy you want. And then this allows us to keep our cards in our hand. 
So if I was running silent or maybe even even the other hero, I think this would be a lot more powerful. We don't have a lot of combos. This, this is important for combos. So is it, I guess the question then becomes, is it more important for us? And this relic's good, but I only take it if the other two relics are trash. So these two are not trash. So I guess the question is, is it worth it for me to um, keep cards in my hand to set up what combos I have? Or is it better to take my bad cards and transform them and upgrade them? And the last game I played, I remember saying to all you guys that um, I, I feel like I need more power in my in my deck for the for the round. So I I think we go Astro Blade. I think we go Astro Blade. Tim, what do you think? You still there? Astro Blade or Pyramid? Upgrade my three worst cards, or transform them and upgrade them, or be able to keep my hand from turn to turn. I'll let you make the call. Hmm. All right, that's where we're going. Tim says Astro Blade. So we're going to leave one block, we'll pick one defend, and we'll pick two strikes. So we got, oh, that's fast. We got um, Clash, I saw. So it can only, okay, that's a terrible card. <laughs> All right, that's not a good one. That's better, I guess, than a standard defend. Um, okay, this. so this was actually really good, this Juggernaut. We picked that up. And yes, Slay the Spire is on Game Pass. Oh, nice. Nice. Yeah, it's definitely worth picking up. I wish they had some kind of multiplayer version of it. I'd be playing this all the time. And we got a second win. So I don't, I'm not happy with the cards we got, but um, we'll have to try to make them work. Maybe it would have been more powerful to do the other way, but that's that's the, the risk you run. So now we go to the city, which is this next run. And let's check this out. Let's see. So we have our shop here. So we can go to our first shop. We've got 325 gold burning a hole in our pocket. So that might be a good pass. So we'd go enemy, shop, enemy. Then we could event, random event, random event, heal or upgrade. Event, heal or upgrade, chest. But can we... Okay, so then we would go enemy, elite, shop. Oh, I kind of like this run. I think this is where we're going to go. So this is going to be our path. So we got to start here. This could be pretty good. Okay, not a huge fan of fighting the Chosen. Um, definitely start with a Metallicize. Here's Reaper. Do four damage to all enemies. Heal the... Okay. We don't really have anything to heal right now. Um, let's defend and strike. We'll take one here. So that actually taking one damage is perfect because we should now draw into, we did not get it. We will battle trance and now we should get it. We did not get it. <laughs> so it's sitting here. Yep, it's right there. Blood for Blood was a card I was looking for, but fine. Exhaust all non-attack cards in your hand. Gain seven block for each card exhausted. Oh, so if we exhaust this, we get two more. So we could close line. Oh, this is actually a good combo leave all of our attack cards and then hit for 18 but we would exhaust that in our defense and this exhume which I'm fine with I guess although I would want this exhume in a different uh, I wish I had this in a different time different he's not attacking us though this turn so I'd kind of uh... yeah we can't play that this just becomes a dead card again I just say it's okay because we don't have a lot of skills, but he's going to hit us with a debuff. All right, let's weaken him, and let's hit him with a strike, and then we'll redraw. See, these are situations where I'm glad I'm not keeping that whole hand. 
I want to cycle through my deck with only 17 cards. So I think it's still the right call. I think you still made the right call, Tim. So whenever I play a non-attack card, I shuffle one daze into my draw pile, which becomes a dead card. So hit him for 22. Whenever I gain block, deal 7 damage. I like this. I just, God, I don't like how expensive it is. He's not hitting us this. We, got, we have time. Let's just do this. So we got a dazed. Hit for 11 damage. He's not hitting us, so we have time. He's going to hit us with another effect. And he just took 7 damage because... So... Oh, there's a debuff. Now he's hitting us. Now we don't have much block. So we will use that. Deal 7 damage to him. We'll deal another 7 damage every time we gain block. So that's good. And let's weaken him so he's not hitting us quite as hard. Down to 31. Took 3. So now that... Blood for Blood will be even bigger. There's just an unplayable card, Dazed. Exhaust all non-attack cards in your hand. I hate this card. <laughs> I hate it with a passion. Got like no attack. I mean, maybe now we could do this. Well, see, this, these aren't attack cards. These are status cards. And so now I'm picking up these status cards, so I still won't be able to play this. It got rid of... Oh, there we go. Okay, nice. Every time we add block. That's actually... That actually <laughs> so I actually... that I stumbled into a really powerful combo there. Okay. It hit me right the last second. I didn't talk it through, and I played it, and it worked that way. So every time we gain block... We deal that damage. That actually is a really good combo. Apply three weak and three vulnerable to all enemies. There's another sentinel. So now we have a way to exhaust cards. This might be worth picking up another one. Three damage to random enemy three times. Hmm. I think I'm I think I feel good with one sentinel. I'm skipping. Alright, so now we go to the shop. And we have options of cards. Usually you want to spend your money on relics here, because that's what's gonna give you your biggest bang for your buck. So self-forming clay, whenever you lose HP, you gain three block that next turn. So that's gonna go well with the power of gaining block. I think that's a must-have with our build right now. Uh, because now he'll take seven damage every time every time we add block. So we'll add block for the metallicize, we'll add block for this. That's 14 damage. That's actually pretty good. Every three, three turns gain, that's actually really good too. Every three turns you gain an energy. And this will be able to play unplayable status cards. I think we have to get the clay. That leaves us with 91 and now we, we can spend 75 on a card removal. What card do we want to remove? So now we want to keep this combo. We definitely want to keep that combo now. We'll keep Sentinel because we will we get resources when we exhaust. I mean, maybe it's just a strike. Yeah, that's that's actually not a bad idea. Because now we're exhausting cards though, so we can pay one to get them back. But the idea, see, now we actually, with this, we are exhausting cards. So, like, I could still do this, do the damage, and with Exhum, pull back a, tra a battle trance. The problem is, so, like, this becomes more valuable now. The problem is, so if I have Exhum and Second Wind in my hand at the same time, like I did that one turn, it makes this really hard to do because it, it doesn't allow me to bring that back. Mm. I find myself skipping Bash a lot, too, because... 
And we're gaining so much block. I think we get rid of one of our basics. I think this is right, Tim. I think this is a good way to go like a turn or two ago before we pick these up. Seeing that last combo, I kind of want the flexibility of this now. That last combo finished him with me just playing one card and exhausting my hand. The other thing that helped that was I exhausted the the unplayable statuses that he put. All right, buddy. See you, Tim. Thanks, man. Thanks for hanging out. Appreciate it. We'll go defend here. Um, yeah, I guess so. This should work. All right. Where are we at? Let's see what we got here. Two thieves. Yes, for sure. I should I should have gotten rid of the attack card. I should have gotten rid of the attack card probably. Let's go ahead and draw up, see what we get here. That works. Um, if I'll be left with attack cards, yeah, let's do that. And then now I can hit for 18. All right. And then we'll add 14. Take six. And then we added three from Terraforming Clay. Now we need our we need Juggernaut for sure. So that'll be good. So this is a great example. We got second win with Exhum. Good. All right, yeah, blood for blood, that works. Strength Potion, take it. Perfected Strike, deals six damage, deals three additional damage for all of your cards containing Strike. Now that won't work for us. Um, this is good because it gives us the block with that power, with that Juggernaut power. Seems to be a harmless one. You approach him out of curiosity. Match them to keep them. Five tries, no do-overs. Are you ready? I've never seen this one before. Oh my gosh, this is amazing. I've never seen this. Alright. Flame Barrier. Bash. Impervious. I want that one. Oh my gosh, I want that one. Flex. So this is Bash, Flex, Impervious. Finesse. Flex. All right, so impervious, impervious. That's nice. Flex, flex. All right, you can put the Gumbles game and look up. He's disappeared. All right, cool. 
Um, flex is okay. I like flex. I guess that works with what we need. Impervious is great. And now exhume becomes super powerful. Because this can do 7 damage with Juggernaut on top of that. Now, if we can upgrade Impervious, let's let's take a look. Let's go here first. Oh, we got to fight. Oh, this guy's going to mess up our hand. This is frustrating. I don't really have much. This is a terrible first turn. Yeah, I guess. Just heal up. Terrible first turn. Okay, still important. Every time we add block. Can't play anything else after that, but... This is going to be a problem, possibly. Blood for a Blood is mixed up, which is nice. Metallicize, important. Good. Yeah, 22 damage will work. Yes. Just block gaining block and destroying him. So this will do seven damage and give me five block. <laughs> Pretty interesting. What do I have in Zoom? I have Reaper. Um, yes. Yikes. That'll finish him. So that helps. All right, love and gold. Apply through weak. No, nope, I'll keep that. I'll keep what I have now. I have the strength to add. Perfected strike. Deal six damage. It does additional three damage for all of your cards. Continue strike. No, nope. no. Nope. Seven block is lost one card at random. No. So we're not going to take any. 19 card deck. Let's see what. Let's see what impervious is. Oh, just 40. Same cost. Exhume does go to zero, which is nice. 
Reaper deals five for each, or heals five for each. Does Sentinel go to... Sentinel goes to eight. We maybe he should be healing here. But having Reaper makes me feel okay uh, about it. Let's just upgrade. We'll heal later on. Deal five block, deal five damage. Put a card from your exhaust pile. I don't think Exhumed's worth upgrading. Battle Trance. Drawing four is nice. I think I'm going to go Battle Trance. I think that's going to be the way to go as we fight up here. We'll be able to rest here. Try to get through this last thing. Open a Relic. 50% come Curse with Wrist. Um, okay. Let's get a Relic and then we have 50% chance of becoming Cursed. And this starts in our hand. Let's do it anyway. Ah, we didn't get it. We got the relic, but we didn't get cursed. Nice. Uh, if your HP is is at or below fifty percent at the end of combat, heal twelve. Oh my gosh, that is huge. That's the end of combat. Okay, I was at the end of a turn. I'm like, oh my god, the end of a turn. That'd be incredible. It's it's the end of combat. Okay, so <laughs> so I'll be healing six plus twelve at the end of uh, if I'm below fifty percent. Okay. So here we are going to heal. We're not going to upgrade because we chose to upgrade the last rest stop. All right, so we're back up to 85, and we're going to go either one of these, and then we're going to go the elite path, we said. So we're going to fight this elite after the standard. What's up, Kyle? How's it going, man? We're just getting to the second level of this spire here. We've got a pretty good deck built. Matt and Tim were... We're helping me um, build some uh, build the deck that I have now. And I'm basically running with um, giving myself some health or giving myself some defense, and we've got a, quite a few pretty cool synergies here. So, yeah, it will make you <laughs> for sure. It's on Game Pass on Xbox right now. Matt, Matt, and, and Tim both left just a few minutes ago, and uh, and they're buying it. Uh, but it's on Game Pass, I think, if you have Game Pass on Xbox. And it's on Switch. Switch is always full price. On Steam, it uh, I think I got it for like 15 I think it's 24 You can get it for different deals. But you know, the, the synergies are great. So like, just to give you an example, because I know you'll appreciate this. This guy is the attacky red guy, right? And so, um, so as an example, here's my combinations, basically. So powers are things you add to yourself for the combat. Skills are things that happen. Then attacks are attacks, obviously. So here's Juggernaut. I'll add this power to me. So whenever you gain, uh, whenever you gain block, you deal seven damage to the random enemy. So now I'm doing things to gain block. I'm gaining thirty block here. Um, the main combo is if I can do this, I draw a bunch of skills in my hand. Uh, different skills are like blocking skills and whatnot. Um, then I do Second Wind. Exhaust all non-attack cards in your hand. Gain seven block for each card exhausted that way. So when different enemies give me dumb, like dead cards, <laughs> that's true. The only game pass you had was mine. Um, so all the dead cards that an enemy will give me turn into an exhausting of a non-attack card, and then I get seven block and I hit them for seven damage each time. It's just this really cool like synergy uh, that happens, and there's a lot of really kind of cool things. Then I can go back into my graveyard with Exhum and pull this card back out because it gets exhausted. There's all kinds of really cool things that happen. So let's get another Relic. Also, the Relics I have are um, basically I every time I take damage, I add defense. So when that happens, they take 7 damage. There's all kinds of cool things happening. So the new Relic is whenever you enter a rest site, start the next combat with 2 energy. That's just pretty okay. That's about it. Um, all right, go to a regular dude here. All right, so this guy can knock out 
he's got receives 50% less attack damage, canceled if dealt attack damage three times in one turn. So if I attack him three times in one turn, he'll take a ton of damage, but he'll actually get knocked out. He's hitting me for 10 twice. Uh, I have flex. It's too early for this. Uh, I don't have a ton I can do here. Not a great first turn. I'm going to hit him, actually. Give him weak to, so that he hits a little weaker now. Um, I don't have that combo up and running yet. So... Yeah, I don't want to exhaust these cards. I'm going to need them. So that's pretty much our turn. Not great. So we'll take six here. He gave himself one strength, so he'll hit harder next turn. And I gave myself two. Now this is where I would do seven damage, seven damage if I had um, Juggernaut up, but I don't. So we'll do Battle Trance, draw four. Clash only does damage if everything's an attack card. So Juggernaut is still sitting here in my draw pile. Cool. Uh, Metallicize is important. That's going to give me... Uh, four defense each time. He's hitting for 13. God, this is where this combo really comes from. Block, add block, add block, and that'd be doing a ton of damage. All right. Uh, let's see. I can heal with that. But don't want to do that. Two. Strike. All right. So I'll block all that. I don't know what status he's putting on me. Uh, he's putting Hex on me, so whenever I play a non-attack card, I shuffle a Dazed into my pile. Now this is where this could get really good, because that Dazed uh, will do a lot. I've taken two damage, so this is cost one less for each. This will do 22 damage to him. So this is definitely, I must do that. I add a Dazed, but that's okay, because now when I add block, I'm in good shape. All right, so we're gonna hit him. Oh, he's taking. I forgot it's less. Okay, we're okay. And I have two heal potions up here too. So each time, each time I add. Oh my gosh! Every time they're hitting me, I'm getting metallicized. So watch, boom. Oh, I only added it once. That's why. Got two resources from Sundial. Every time I back up, let's draw. Oh, I should have done that first. That was dumb. So I'll heal that much. There we go. Ton of defense. All right, this is where I want that... Um, second wind, but I don't have it. I don't, that feels like overkill. Ah, what the heck, let's just do it. He's almost dead. Adding quite a bit of block. He keeps making me vulnerable, though, so he's doing more damage each time. Anything to bring back? So, that'll do it. There's a combo. <laughs> it's cool. It's a fun game. Really fun game. I, every time I've played it, I've, it's been different. Oh, so that's actually de that's decent. Um, add a card to my deck. Heavy Blade, I'm not adding enough strength. So this is really good because it's 14 damage and then strength affects it three times more than normal. Strength just adds one uh, a multiplier to your damage. But I don't really, it's not, I'm not really building that kind of a deck. Yes, your health stays from level to level. Although this guy's uh, special ability, this relic, at the end of combat, heals 6 HP. You'll also get an option later on to get this relic to 12 HP. Um, but yeah, your health stays from combat to combat. You're basically just going through a dungeon. 
Whenever a card is exhausted, draw a card. That's not really that great for what I'm doing. Deal nine, draw a card. Um, I'm gonna keep my deck low. I'm not gonna take any of these. I don't want to. I don't want to clog it up too much. Yeah. So this is the dungeon right here. So this is the second level dungeon, and you pick your path however you want to go. Um, and then at the rest stops, you can heal or you can um, upgrade a card. Upgrading a card makes it more powerful or cheaper or something like that. So it's pretty cool. So we're going to fight the elite now. And then it's 440, so I'll probably log in off to this. This is the Book of Stabbing. <laughs> All right, let's, let's draw. Hmm. Hitting for 21. Problem with doing this now is I exhaust it, which means I can't use it the rest of combat. Same with this. Hmm. So I definitely want to do that. Ethereal means if it's left in your hand, it gets exhausted. So you kind of want to play those, and they'll keep cycling back through your deck. If you can, if you need to. We're going to try to block him primarily here. The most of it if we can. Uh, we're going to wait on second wind. I don't want to exhaust these cards. Yeah, we'll just do cleave. And, you know, we'll use this potion since he's an elite. Um, well, we're going to get metallicized. Let's save that. Let's see if he's doing a lot of damage to us first, I guess. So self-forming clays. And the, okay, so the wound cards are going to be nice because then we can do that same thing. Okay, there's Juggernaut. I've got to play that right away. So now every time we add block, uh, there's metallicized. Need to play that. So that's our turn, but I'm okay with it because that's, a, that's our combo. Self-forming clay. So every time, again, we add any kind of block, he'll take 7 damage like he just did there. Okay, so flex, add strength, blood for blood, we'll hit 24. Um, this will give him weak, so his 21 will be less, but that'll run us out of... We can also heal. Uh, we're only going to heal 6 damage off of it, so I think this is going to give us more value. This will be 14 too weak. This will do 5 block and 7 damage with gaining the block, but we're going to gain the block anyway with this. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and do that. That way, now he's only hitting for 15. I want to draw, like, a, see, I, I want to draw a wound with, like, uh, like a handful of wounds with second wind. <laughs> do, like, 40 damage to him. So again, we could run that same thing, go weak, block. Um, I think we're going to do that. Let's make him weaker. Oh, he's already weakened, because this is this will last for a while. Yeah, that'd be, pre <laughs> be pretty not bad. So that'll do seven damage, give us five block, and then we'll add seven more damage and 12 blocks. So block all that damage. Um, skill, skill, so this would be 7, 14, uh, let's draw, let's see what we get here, skill, 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 so this would be, there we go, so this would be 7, 14, 28, so 7 times, 1, 2, 3, 4, so it would be 28 damage. Um, I don't think he heals himself at all, so I mean that probably would be okay. And we can just block his 16 attack. Uh, oh, no, this one too. Yeah, let's do it. I forgot about the wound. So he's got 12 damage left. Perfect. <laughs> just trying to do the math in my head. <laughs> Like, but, but I went to Riverside, so normal enemies drop an additional card reward. Oh, nice. Okay. Another ghostly armor. Anger is really good. 
if you get upgraded anger, it just costs zero and it makes a copy of itself and puts it into your into your draw pile. But you always start with the same 19 cards, same deck, right? As you're upgrading. Whatever changes during the combat ends up going right back to whatever your base deck is. So you're exhausting cards, you're getting rid of cards, changing cards, whatever. It always goes back to whatever your deck list is. But I mean, you can, like, there's there's also th three other heroes. So you, there's, there's a couple that are right up your alley. Like, very janky, stabby, discard two cards, get a life. Or get a, get a energy, pay, pay an energy, um, you know, draw one. Like it's just like, you know whatever. Like you could just cycle for a ton. It's really cool though. Um, are these effects to rip cards out of the deck permanently? No. Yeah. <laughs> no. It's it's always during combat. So whatever your deck is, it's it comes in as that. I, I think I'm. I don't know if I'm answering your question right. Whatever the deck is, it comes in as that, and then um, in the game, it changes whatever those are. You can upgrade cards. You can do things. You can exhaust cards that are out of your deck. You can do all that kind of stuff. There's definitely a lot of jank, as you would say. I actually said that earlier. I don't know if Matt and Tim knew what I was talking about. I said, yeah, there's some pretty janky things. <laughs> yeah, but there's definitely some jank. This guy is the least janky, and he's got some jank, right? As you can see, he's an attack only guy, and I'm and I'm, I'm getting, you know, I'm getting kills off of giving him defense, right? <laughs> he's not a de he's not a defensive character. This whole thing is just to attack. Um. All right, I think given our our current state, I'm gonna take the ghostly armor again. The anger, I think, would be good. Like so, there's an example all janked up. There's an example. There's like he, there's a couple cards that you gain block when you play an attack card. I don't have that combo, so d anger would be amazing for that because anger just multiplies throughout your deck. Now again, if you have one anger when you start the your combat, um, when you start each combat, you only have one anger, but you could play it five times and now you've got ten anger in your deck, which is pretty cool. Um, and then you can have cards that upgrade them, so like it's it's really neat. It's it's got some cool mechanics. So I'm gonna take the ghostly armor. Now we go to the shop with 140 gold. We cannot buy any of the relics, which stinks because I'd like to. We bought this self-forming clay last time, which has really been giving us a lot of. Every time we take damage, we add three, which has really been helping us a lot. Panic button gain 30 block. You cannot. Uh, you cannot gain block from cards for two more turns. That won't be good for us. It'll be good in a pinch, but not good for what we're trying to do overall. Four times. Two damage, four times exhaust. All right, it might just be worth it to remove a card from our deck, pay the 100 bucks, and go that route. And I think we're going to just remove a basic strike. They just kind of take up space. We want other cards in there. Only six damage isn't going to do as much good as we move through the game here. All right, here, here, and then there. And these are the little like things you have to make choices on. Scaling the city, you notice a wall covered in writing of ancients. As you try to wrap your head around the puzzling symbols and glyphs, could mean the writing uh, begins to glow. Suddenly, the message becomes clear. Remove a card from your deck. Upgrade all strikes and defends. Well, I'm, I've gotten rid of most of those, so we might as well continue that. That's nice. Yeah. Um, all right, so we're almost at the end here. So, oh, another shop that we can't spend anything on because this goes up every time you remove a card. Body slam. Deal damage equal to your block. Actually, this card is terrible early in the game, but based on what I'm doing now, that might not be bad. Because how many times did I have 34 block? <laughs> so I think that's actually decent. Use our last, our last couple things. And then we're at 63 health, so I think we need to heal. So we won't be able to upgrade. So we'll rest, and we'll be back up to 85. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. You just got to have the energy to do it. All right, so this is the second level. After this guy, I think I'm going to call it a stream. Uh, but this is the, the second main boss that you play. And again, these are all random. So some of these are much harder than others, I feel like. I feel like some of them I'm like relieved when I see them, and others I'm like, oh, God, not this guy. There's a guy that's 
spawns these two minions. It's like the Grim Reaper. Um, and he's very difficult, but um, let's see what we got. Oh, that's him. Perfect. That's who we got. That's the random... <laughs> the guy I hate. So he's going to... The nice thing is he doesn't attack early. So if we can get some damage on him, which we really can't... Okay, so this would be 10 block, 10 damage with flex will give me more. So this will give me strength. I believe in you. Thank you. 10 block... And look, we started, we started with a rest stop. We started with extra stuff that we can't really even use. Um, we can weaken him. But, so this will be 12 damage because we added to our strength. And there's that. And this doesn't do us any good. Well, this will give us 7 block, but that's... I don't want to waste it because it'll exhaust that card. So we need that. So we didn't do very much to him. Now he'll spawn these two minions. Um, and they just, you know, they just are constantly out. He'll start hitting really big, which is where I get a little nervous. Okay, there's Juggernaut, which is good. Now we need Metallicize, which is still sitting in our deck, yes. So when I pull this up, it just shows you the cards, but they're randomized. There is a, a relic you can get where you can see the order that you're drawing from, which is kind of cool. Uh, all right, so I guess we'll do that. Oh, I shouldn't have done that, actually. Actually, for this, because it's the boss, we are going to do that. And so now we'll start with this. So now we'll gain six at the end of, of each turn, six block. So that's, that's definitely worth waiting. I'm glad I didn't use it on the other guy. And so now we'll do, it'll do seven, we'll do seven damage to a random en enemy every time we, we add that block. If we do Metallicize now, though, it'll add to this. So it'll be good because it'll give us, it'll give us ten... But it'll give us 10 block every turn, which is amazing. And it should give us no um, no issues. But the challenge becomes... The challenge becomes we don't, they're not going to be separate instances, which kind of stinks. I think Clash is a card I need to remove. I'm not running an attack-heavy strategy. It was one that was added with upgrade off of um, this Astro Blade Relic that Tim told me to pick up. And I... It was a good call, I think, at the time, but looking back on it, I probably should have gone with something else. The other relic was a pyramid that allows you to keep your hand and never discard your cards. Instead, we got rid of a bunch of our stuff. Yeah, so... Okay. Oh, that was a lot of damage we just took there. All right, let's draw. So this will give us more block at the end of the turn. Oh, blood for blood is... We've already taken so many hits that it's already cost nothing to do 22 damage. Do we have strength in our hand? We don't have strength in our hand, so we can just play this out. Um, let's, I guess, just kill... Well, let's see what happens on the random first. So we definitely want to do that. Give ourselves more block. Let's add armor. So add 10 armor and do damage. Let's see if it randomly does it to... Okay, it randomly did it to him, so we'll take him out. Yep. Good. And then we'll add more block, do 7 more damage to something. Okay. Now I... <laughs> we don't get to keep that block there, though. Yeah, the, py the pyramid probably was really good. It just... At the time, we didn't have a ton of combos. I didn't have a ton of combos. So I'm like, you want to keep... I wanted to keep cycling my deck. I've only got 19 cards. That was a thought process. Um, which, I don't know. It's hard to... Like, see, I'm seeing the same cards over and over. Which is really good. Okay, so here. Now we can do some massive damage to him. Um, actually, this would be a really good turn. I wish I had a few more... Energy... Okay, so, ah, well, yeah, we, I'm hoping it does the damage to him. Let's do that. It does. Add ghostly armor. Oh, no, 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 no. Woo! I guess we'll just have to do 30 and then blood for blood. Wow, I almost ruined that. Um, 
All right, so we want to do 30 to him. God, I just feel like we're taking seven. Oh, we're going to block it so it doesn't matter. And we're going to add blocks, so hopefully it'll kill him. So we just want to do our big swings at him. I feel like that's the right call. Oh, no. And we're going to lose this card. We lost it because I didn't play it. So now he's just added a bunch of debuffs to me. So I'm going to not hit as hard. It's going to be harder for me to gain block, and I'm going to be vulnerable. So this strength becomes pretty important. All right. Um, yes. Yes. Um, yes. Yes. I can heal myself too, which is good. Okay, I could also exhume impervious. God, I should have upgraded that card. Skill, skill. Damn, I really can't do a lot of damage this turn. So I think maybe that's what I do. Yeah, because he's hit me for 22, 8, and 8. Yeah, probably the way I should go. I don't think I do more damage, I don't think so, off of this ability, no, because it's static to 7. Mm. Oh, and I can only get 22. Make him hit for less, give him 2 weak. Uh, I should have done that first, that's okay. Perfect. Mathematically. God, man, these things, this is a, this is... Forming clay, seven damage to the front guy? Yes. Okay, draw. <sighs> this is getting stressful. Well, I could, uh, all right, he's gonna debuff me again next turn, which sucks. I've got body slam. I don't have a way to give myself a ton of block other than what I have already. I could heal here. This might be a good way to go. I think I should heal. It's going to cost two, though. Do 11 to everything. Oh, I should do this first to heal as much as I can. So let's do that, because then I'll heal all the damage. It still didn't kill him. Now I'll cleave. Um, now I might as well just take him out so I don't take damage. He's not going to spawn them this turn because he's doing something else to me. Okay, he added, he buffed him, he gave himself armor. And now he's going to spawn the minions back. Okay, these are all skills, so I could. Except for this card. So I could give myself 21 block and hit for 21. But I'm losing those cards. Um, I mean, I kind of would rather just keep these cards in rotation. I don't want to lose them because they're part of my... Hmm, yeah, I don't think I want to do that. I'm going to gain 10 block. Even though the block doesn't do anything, I'm just doing damage off of them. And now I need to try to just really direct all my damage to him if I can. Yeah. 
Okay. We're getting there, dude. We're getting there. We're getting there. That hurt. Skill. Yeah, I think so too, but I just got to be tactful about it. So I, I'd like to hit him. Okay, skill, skill. This would do 8 damage. So I think maybe now is when I do this combo. So give myself strength. Deal 10. Give him vulnerable. Burn those two skills. No, that didn't work the way I wanted it to. Um, well, he'll take vulnerable for the next turn, too. Yeah, that didn't work with the way I, I misread that. That's my bad. Well, that's okay. He's down to 33 now. But I'm going to take 15. And I can, st again, I still have two heal potions. And at the end of this run, because I'm starting the whole new level, I, I get all my health back. So as long as I finish with one health against the main boss, that's all that matters. Oh, well, we did it. Thank you, Kyle, for your help. Got an explosive potion. I get to add a legendary to my deck now. Another reaper to heal. Feed, I do not like. 10 damage, if fatal, raise your max XP. XP. It's okay, but you're not often in a position for that. And then bludgeon, deal 32. If I had four, bludgeon would be pretty good. And maybe, so... I'll get a choice of a relic at the end. So I could possibly get the option of adding another energy each turn. But I might have four at the end of this. So if I started with four energy, that makes it different, right? Pretty good chance I'll have an option at a, at a relic that will add an energy. And I'll start each combat with four energy. Is it worth the risk? Three defense additions, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. If once I have that up and running, God, thirty-two feels really good though when you do it. <laughs> and I, if I add strength to it, it pumps it. Have two heal me uh, mechanics seem pretty good survival wise. Yeah, I agree. I agree because that's where I kind of run into trouble. All right. And that's still expensive, and I might be able to upgrade it to make it cheaper. All right, so here we go. So gain one at the start of your turn. You can no longer rest at rest sites. That's not an option. Gain one at the start of your turn. You can no longer smith at rest sites. Ah. Uh, upon pickup, obtain a unique curse and three relics. That's interesting. Hmm. So I would pick up three new relics. I wouldn't get to choose them. They'd be random. Do what? Do it, you won't. Gain, you know, the starter here no longer Smith. I mean, that this one I actually might be an option. Resting, I mean, I, I'm all the cards that I need upgraded are for the most part upgraded, but it would just suck. Yeah. And then the curse is just going to be a card in my deck that's going to be dead, basically. I don't know what curse it is, though. Uh, and you can't remove them when you remove cards. You can remove them and exhaust them through other means in combat. Upon pickup, obtain a unique curse and three relics. Oh, God. Curse the Bell, unplayable. Cannot be removed from your deck. Okay, that's not bad. Red Skull, while your HP is at or below 50%, you have three additional strength. That's really good. Paper Frog, enemies with vulnerable take 75% more damage rather than 50%. That's good. Okay, so at the start of your third turn, gain 18 block. <laughs> I just got to have my engine up. <laughs> yeah. 
I just got to have my engine up by the third turn. <laughs> I should be good. Nice. All right, so then we run our last run. So I need to, if I finish this run, I unlock the last character, and that's what I need to do. So I think I'm going to stop it here. And uh, this is this is a good run though so far. This is the watcher. This guy's so this guy you you only have so much time. So let's say you fill your hand with fifteen cards, right? And you go through, and if you, he, you he's got like a timer, and it turns the turn over to him, and he does all kinds of stuff and makes you go back in time, and he's he's really hard to fight. Uh, there's a different boss each time, and the, the symbol up here tells you which boss you're fighting, which is kind of cool. Uh, I just don't have that memorized yet. Um, all right, man. Well, thanks for watching all those who did. I'm going to cut off the stream. And um, I'm sure Kyle will be playing this now uh, as he's watching me play. <laughs> this game's really fun. I just I can't get enough of it. So I am going to cut it off. Thanks for all those who are watching. Thanks for giving Shield Wall a chance. I'll uh, catch everybody later. <laughs> it's downloading. <laughs> He's already got it out of its way. I try to tell you about this game, man. This game's good. All right, I'll see you guys. Have a good one.